Thank you for downloading the free trial of Forecast Pro Track. My name is Eric Subatis, and I'm the Director of Sales here at Business Forecast Systems. In this quick video, we're going to show you how to get up and running by doing three main things. We're going to format your historic data. We're going to pull it into Forecast Pro so you can run a forecast. And then I'm going to show you how you can simply save out those results. So let's get started. First thing we're going to want to do is set up some historic data. You can do that in a variety of formats, including Excel, CSV, text, or even connect directly to a database via ODBC. We recommend for the trial that you use spreadsheets, since they're easy to manipulate and it allows you to start experimenting with the software very quickly. There are two main ways your file can be formatted. One way is to format everything in a row format, where your historical data for each forecasted item runs left to right in the spreadsheet. Here you can see this data is monthly, the months run left to right, and the spreadsheet is formatted accordingly. You can also use a transaction format. This is the exact same data, except rather than running left to right, this data has one transaction or record per row. Regardless of which format you choose, they're gonna share a couple common features. If you turn your attention to the left, the first couple columns will define your product hierarchy. This is a tree-like structure that will define groupings for your data. The leftmost is going to be the top of your hierarchy, and the rightmost will be the bottom. This example is organized total, category, customer, and then SKU. But you're not limited to that. Use as many columns as you need, and you can define these as any sort of attribute or grouping that you want. Following that, we have a field labeled description. This description keyword is required, and you need to call this column exactly description. It is not part of your hierarchy, but it can be populated with whatever you want. For example, it is commonly populated with a description of the bottom level, in this case the SKU, but it could just as easily be blank or anything else. The key detail is that you have this column labeled exactly description, because that helps Forecast Pro know that everything leading up to that is part of your hierarchy and everything after it becomes part of the calendar and the data. Following our description field, we have a couple calendar fields. We have a starting year and starting period field, which refer to the first column of data. In this case, our first column is January 2012, and so our two columns are populated with 2012 and one respectively. The last two here are called periods per year and periods per cycle, and these simply define the periodicity of the data. Forecast Pro lets you work in weeks, months, or anything else, and so in this case, because we're working in months, these are both 12, for 12 months in a year. If you were using weekly data, you might populate them with the number 52 for 52 weeks in a year. Briefly jumping back to our other example, this follows all the same conventions, except instead of starting year and starting period, we have the year and period of the transactional data point. Just be aware that this is still rolled up into months or weeks. Now, once we've got our data formatted for Forecast Pro, we can pop open the software. By now, you should have the tool installed on your machine, and you can open it up by simply double-clicking on its icon. The first thing we'll do is access the data manager here at the top of the screen as this first red button. Here you can point Forecast Pro at all sorts of different kinds of data, but the only thing you need to worry about right off the bat is the historic data right here at the top. We're going to choose Add to add a data source. Because our data is in Excel, we'll choose Excel, and now I'll just point at the file that we had set up. Last but not least, we hit the Read and Forecast button, and assuming we've formatted our file correctly, it will pull in our history and generate a forecast all automatically. On the left-hand side, you'll see your hierarchy exactly as you set it up in the file. If you recall, this one was organized total, category, customer, and then SKU. Now, there are a lot of screens here to explore in Forecast Pro, so feel free to do that. But when you're ready to save your results, you can jump into this last yellow button called the numeric output. This lets you kind of dump out your forecasts in any format that you like. You can save it out by either right-clicking it and choosing Save This Page to Excel, pressing this last purple button, which essentially does the same thing, 
or by choosing Project Export Full Numeric Output. This quick video showed you how to format your data, pull in your data, and save some forecast results. There are, of course, a ton of other functionalities available here in Forecast Pro. Feel free to contact us anytime for help, or if you prefer to self-learn, check out the help menu here at the top. Using either the help topics or the user's guide, you can jump through all sorts of different tutorials, or if you simply want more information on how to, how to set up your data, that's here too. Thanks for listening, and good luck with your trial of Forecast Pro Track.